Welcome everybody to the Keto Edge Summit where we are dispelling the myths, helping you overcome the hurdles, and empowering you to improve your brain and your body through the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm your host, Dr. David Jockers, and super excited about our guest today. It's a great friend of mine, and he is really the founder of the organization, The Truth About Cancer, and they have started a worldwide movement really getting the truth about cancer out there that, hey, this isn't a disease we necessarily need to fear. Um, and this is something that we can prevent. And in many cases, we can overcome naturally. And we're gonna dive into this topic of the sugar cancer connection and discuss how a ketogenic lifestyle will really give us an advantage when it comes to preventing and overcoming cancer. So Ty, such a privilege and an honor to have you. And um, you know, we go way back several yeah. years, <laughs> but yeah. you're the best-selling author of a phenomenal book, um, it's Cancer Step Outside the yep. Box. And of course, in that book, you discuss your story about your father with cancer and really cancer and how it plagued your family. And so can you share that with, uh, sure. with our viewers? Sure, and thanks for the great intro. And, and by yeah. the way, Dr. J, you've been with us since the beginning yeah. of The Truth About yeah. Cancer. You yeah. were one of the first interviews, That's right. as a matter of fact. That's uh, right. If I remember correctly. Came out to my the, office. The first year, it was like I interviewed um, Dr. Uh, Roby Mitchell, yep. Mike Adams, yep. and then I think we flew out and you were like number three. Yeah, So yeah. you've been with us for a long time, so thank <laughs> exactly, you. Thank exactly, exactly. Well, it's been an honor to be a part of really the worldwide mission that you guys mm -hmm. are on, and, and you are totally transforming the consciousness of, of humanity and getting this idea out that we don't have to fear cancer. Yeah, yeah, and, yep. and that really came from a lot of you know personal yep. loss. You know, so mm -hmm. my father was diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. July the 1st of 1996. Hmm. He died the 25th of July. Yeah. So 25 days later, he's gone. Right. We learned later that he actually didn't die from the cancer. He actually died from the surgery. Hmm. He they took his stomach out and he bled to death. Yeah. He had 19 blood transfusions in 25 days. He was gone. Wow. So he didn't really die from the cancer, but we thought he died from the cancer. But that was what really started us to kind of examine the modern medical system when it comes to yeah. cancer. How are we treating cancer? How is it that a medical system that seems to be so advanced in many areas can't keep dad alive more than 25 days. Yeah. When his only symptoms when he went to the hospital was an upset stomach. Mm. He was healthy other than that, yeah. that we knew. And mm -hmm. he died in three weeks, so what's wrong? And right. that really kind of got us diving down the rabbit hole and we began to learn that all things are not as they appear yeah. when it comes to the medical system. That a lot of these treatments for degenerative diseases mm. specifically, not necessarily trauma. Yeah. Because trauma, we're very advanced. Right. Right. So somebody comes in here and they stab you, right? You're yeah. not gonna go grab Oliveira. vera, you're gonna go to the emergency room and they're <laughs> exactly. gonna stitch you up. Trauma That's medicine, right. very good. Mm -hmm. Degenerative medicine, not so good, yeah. especially when it comes to cancer. So that was what gave rise to us doing a lot of research. We began to learn that there's treatments out there that aren't all that well known. Mm -hmm. People are getting healed, why don't we put it into a book? And that was the impetus for our first book, Cancer Stuff yeah. Outside the Box, 2006. Right. And then over the next several years, it just kind of, I, began to do radio shows, TV shows, interviews, yeah. writing in magazines, whatever. Yeah. And um, and then in 2014, when we started The Truth About Cancer, that's when it really snowballed. Yes, absolutely. And your your classic training is as an accountant, so you weren't even okay. really in the health field to begin with. And no. so it was just really this this personal crisis that brought yeah. you in it. Yeah. yeah, I'm a CPA. Yeah, I'm a CPA. Absolutely. One of the things I did learn, though, when I was in school was how to research. Yes. So, because I have a master's degree in taxation, yeah. actually. So, one of the yeah. things that we learned when we were doing graduate work in yeah. at Baylor University, yeah. sick and bears, yeah. one of the things we learned was how to research the Internal Revenue Code. Yeah. So, I figured, what the heck, if I can do that, I can research medical literature. I can, I can read yeah. and understand. That's really all it is. Right. See, we're, we're told that you're not really smart enough to understand yeah. medicine. Mm -hmm. That's for the doctors. It's kind of like the way that the Bible used to be for the priests. You're not yeah. really smart enough. Only the priest can understand right. the Bible but the lay person can't. But the reality is that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And it's not true that the lay person can't understand uh, yeah. anything about medicine either. Yeah. Documents are out there, you know, thank God for the oh, internet. Yeah. You can go access just about any study that's ever been done. Yeah. You and I can read. Yeah, exactly. Right? Now, you are a doctor, but I'm yeah. not. But right. we can both read and understand, and yep. that's, all, that's all that we did, and that's all that we yep. recommend people do. Yeah. Read for yourself, educate yourself, and then try to understand what makes the most sense for you to be healthy. Yeah, absolutely, and this is what's so great is that citizens can take back the power. Right, because because yeah. the research is out there. You go on Google, go to PubMed, type in anything, and you see it there. It's all right? there. Exactly. It's accessible for yep. everybody, and so yeah. we encourage people to do that. And it might be that the solution for this person is different than the solution for that yes. one, but they should have the freedom to make that choice. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And so, and one of the big pet peeves for me is that we don't have that. We're losing that choice. Yeah. We do have freedom still. Yeah. You know, I still believe that the United States is the best country in the world mm -hmm. for freedom. 
but it's it's rapidly getting taken away from yeah, us when we look at things like forced vaccinations yes and so forth so we got to stand yeah. up to keep our freedom to choose in medicine we do otherwise we'll lose it if you don't stand up for those rights you'll lose them yeah without a doubt and we see like when we're talking about cancer the rates of cancer are just going up every year more and more people are diagnosed with cancer and you know, say one out of two men one out of three women yeah. now um, and so, I mean, literally, you know, most of our, our population is being affected by it, whether it's a friend, family member, or themselves. And so why do you think that is? Why do you think we have such a high prevalence of cancer? Well, it, and it's one in 1.65 dogs now. Yeah, exactly. So, so one, it's almost more pets. frequent than one in two dogs. Yeah. So yep. why is that? Well, you have the genetic theory, mm -hmm. and I say theory because it's, it's just a theory. Exactly. Because 100 years ago, we had one in 80 people with cancer, now it's mm -hmm. one in two, one in three. Yeah. So what changed in 100 years? Did our yeah. genetics change to that extent to where it's gone from one in 80 to one in two? Well, no, that's no. impossible. Yep. Genes don't change that quickly, right? There, yep. there are micro changes in genetics that happen over centuries, right. but not to that extent. And yep. now dogs are getting cancer too. So from last thing I've, I learned, the dog genes and the human genes are different. Yeah, right? absolutely. So it couldn't be genetic because dogs, so what yeah. are humans and dogs exposed to? Yep. Well, they breathe the same air. They're exposed to yeah. the same invisible toxins like radiation. Yeah. They're being fed very similar diets. Yeah. Processed, canned, bagged, dead food. Right. Right? High carbohydrate diets. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. dogs weren't intended. If you if you have a dog out in the wild and it kills an antelope, you know, if a wolf goes and kills an antelope. Yeah. It's eating raw meat. Yeah. It goes for the gut. It goes for yeah. the probiotics in the gut. Yeah. Last time I checked, I never saw a wolf going out and, and, and eating corn out of a cornfield or right. soybeans out of a soy field or whatever other kind of carbohydrates they're putting into rice. Yeah. That's not what dogs eat. Right. So they're eating food that they weren't intended to eat, much yes. like we're eating food we're not intended to eat either. And yeah. <clears throat> to top it off, that food has been destroyed with pesticides, mm. fungicides, just totally compromised from a, a nutritional perspective and throw on top of that the genetically modified factor and it, is it any wonder we're all getting sick? Yeah, absolutely. And you created a whole series talking about pets as well, because you're bringing this up, and so the truth about um, animal cancer, yeah. right? And you're, yeah. you're talking about that. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Is it's not just happening to humans. It's, it's happening, happening to, to animals. animals as well. Yes. And we're, we're exposed to the same toxins. <clears throat> we're breathing the same airs. Yeah. We're exposed to the same radiations. We're eating the same pesticides. Right. We're all getting sick. Yeah. It's not genetic. Yeah. And you know, it's it's real disingenuous for the doctors to say that cancer is a genetic disease. When even yeah. the American Cancer Society, on their own website, there you have a PDF that's easy to mm. download. It's called Cancer yeah. Facts and Figures. They don't, they don't give you the genetic uh, nonsense on that either. They say yeah. that anywhere between 70 and 80% of cancers are caused by environmental toxicity right. and lifestyle choices. So while the ACS says it's not a, a genetic disease, the doctors yeah. tell you it's a genetic disease. But why is that? Let's get to the real reason why they want you to think it's genetic. Because yeah. yeah. if it's genetic, you don't have any hope to fix it. Exactly. Right? So you <clears> just <throat> got to do the protocols. You're, yeah. Sorry, bad genes, bum luck, you're sick with cancer. Right. Here's our treatment. <clears throat> yeah. you, know, it, you feel like you've lost control over it. But if you, if, if, if you learn the truth, yeah. and the truth is that what you eat has a lot to do with how sick you are or how well you are, then you have the power to change that. Yeah. So they, they make you feel powerless by exactly. telling you it's genetic. Exactly. It's totally the difference between a powerless and a powerful position. Mm -hmm. Powerless position says you just have bad luck and this is the outcome that you have and this yeah. is the only option you have. And so you're kind of led like a lemming or, you know, like a sheep to the slaughter in yeah. a sense, as opposed to that powerful position where you're empowered. You're saying, hey, you know what? You may have a disadvantage or, you know, you may not have known this in the past. Mm -hmm. But if you start applying these principles, you're going to help prevent chronic disease and really allow your body to thrive. And so, you know, that's and, and really not, what you're not doing. Not only are you powerless in these, yeah. the, with modern medicine, but you're also encouraged to jettison logic. Yeah. Because what they tell you is, hey, you're sick with cancer. Yeah. You know what we're going to do to treat it? We're going to poison your already sick body. Yeah. And you believe it. We believe it. We're, yeah, we're just, exactly. We don't think anymore. Yep. It, this, because just on, on the smell test, that doesn't make sense. Definitely not. Right? We're yep. going to take your body that's already sick and we're yep. going to inject chemical poison into it yep. in an effort to make it better. Yeah, exactly. And really, we know that disease comes down to either toxicity mm -hmm. or deficiency, typically a combination of both. Yep. Right? So, more, so if you're already toxic and we add more toxins, how did that address it? 
And then those toxins that they're adding are just gonna cause further deficiency. Yeah. And so then we just get even sicker. Although we may have a therapeutic result, our body is actually even more damaged True. after that. And we're deficient in nutrition. Yes. Right? We're not deficient in calories. Yeah. We're deficient in nutrition. As a right. matter of fact, I was, yeah, there's a show that I watch sometimes, and Charlene and the kids think I'm nuts for it, but sometimes I watch it with me. It's called My 600 Pound Life. Mm. And it covers people that literally weigh over 600 pounds, and yeah. their, their struggle to lose weight, a lot of them have surgeries to remove mm -hmm. part of their stomach and all this to, to try to lose weight and yeah. live a long life, a longer life than they would have being 600 right. pounds. Well, the funny thing about that is these people, it's not funny, it's bizarre, I guess. Yeah. These people are actually starving. Mm -hmm. they're, they have tens of thousands of calories that they eat exactly. per day. Exactly. But they're starving for nutrition. Yes. Right? Because the dead, mm -hmm. empty calories yep. they're eating, they don't give them anything that yeah. nutrition wise. And so that's why they're still always eating right, more. Right, right, right. Because they want that satisfaction, but mm -hmm. they never get it. Yeah. Because they're starving for nutrition while Absolutely. they're becoming obese. Yeah, and they're really metabolically inflexible and energy inefficient. So they got all yeah. this stored energy, they just their body can't tap into it. Mm -hmm. They can't buffer blood sugar. I mean, they have all these issues. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about sugar. And so what's the role that sugar plays when it comes to cancer development? Well, it's it's a real basic role, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's the yeah. this. Sugar feeds cancer. Yeah. Now you can read, you can go out and you can read all these medical doctors that will tell you, no, sugar doesn't feed cancer. Sugar doesn't. Well, the reality is, that's just not true. Yeah. This, the, the, the cancer cells, by very nature, are anaerobic. Yeah. Okay? They don't produce energy with oxygen. They produce energy without oxygen. And the yeah. only way that they can do that is the, by fermenting sugar. sugar. And so, when you have a cancer patient, and that's why this is so, it's so, it just chaps me so much when I hear stories of someone going to chemotherapy and then they've got a, a, a big thing of candy at the receptionist's desk. So as they leave their chemical poisoning, yeah. they can grab some candy and further feed the cancer that they were just trying to poison. Yeah. Now, I, I don't say this in a mocking manner towards the patients. They've been completely sold a bill of goods and they've been fooled. Mm. I feel sorry for them. But the oncologists know better. Yeah. And, and so they want, to, they want to give you a big sugar pick-me-up. And, and there's nothing else that chaps me, I guess, for a lack of a better word as well, that when, it, that when an oncologist will tell a cancer patient, don't worry what you eat, doesn't matter. I know. Does not matter. Your diet doesn't matter. You eat whatever you want. You're not sick because you've got a bad diet. It's genetic. Don't worry about it. Just eat whatever you want. You know, that oncologist has just sentenced that person to death. Yeah. If they've told them that. I mean, it's, it's bizarre yeah. to me that we have medical doctors that will tell a patient it doesn't matter what fuel you put into the engine of your body. Yeah. A mechanic knows that's not true. <laughs> a mechanic knows that if you put the wrong fuel into a car, it won't run. Yeah. You, can you pour Kool-Aid in your gas tank and make it run? I wish you could. It'd save me some money on gas. Yeah. But it won't run. Yeah. But we're doing the same, the equivalent. We're pouring all kinds of sugar, Kool-Aid, whatever you want to call it, all these high carb, nutritionless calories into our bodies yeah. and expecting the engine to run, and it won't. Yeah, And so that, to me, that's just, it's so wrong for medical doctors who should know better yeah. to tell their patients yet. But at the same time, I really believe a lot of them have been fooled. Yeah, you're right. I you're believe absolutely they just, right. they've been, that's what they've been taught. Yeah, They've exactly. They've taught that in the textbooks. Exactly. And they're taught that, hey, you know, you're going to learn everything you need in, in medical school. And unfortunately, they don't take nutrition classes. Nope. If they do, it's typically an elective. And that's the problem here. Yeah. And really what, what Ty is talking about here is sugar feeds cancer and sugar stimulates cell reproduction. We know cancer is really defined as abnormal cell reproduction or ex hyper accelerated cell reproduction in our body. And so sugar stimulates that, it stimulates a hormone called insulin, which then stimulates even further this, uh, this hyperactive cell reproduction. And so ultimately we've got to start taking the sugar out of our diet and that's where the ketogenic lifestyle comes yeah. in. And tell us how a ketogenic lifestyle really impacts cell reproduction and cancer development. Yeah, I, I think that a ketogenic mm -hmm. type of diet is, is extremely effective at controlling, yeah. even reversing cancer. Mm -hmm. um, the, I did an interview with Dr. Thomas Seafried. Yeah. He's big into the ketogenic diet for cancer. Yeah, we interviewed him in this summit too, okay. so yeah. So, and I learned more about, from listening to his interview than yeah. I knew about the ketogenic diet and the way that it affects the, the mitochondria of the cells yes. and so forth. So I won't try to reiterate what he said <laughs> since yeah. 
people have already heard. You could put it in layman's terms. The bottom line is that cancer cells turn cancerous because their mitochondria is defective. Yes. Not yep. vice versa. Right. They, their mitochondria doesn't become defective after they turn cancerous. Mm. It's the reason. Yeah. And so one of the things that you can do to help stem that is to eat a diet that's ketogenic mm -hmm. because what that does is that actually, if I remember him correctly, can actually heal mitochondria. Yeah. It, and it can cause them to function properly the way mm -hmm. that they were supposed to, yep. right? Because mitochondria are like the little power plants of energy yeah, in your cells, exactly. right? So the ketogenic diet actually feeding fats, healthy fats, mm -hmm. which turn into ketone bodies, that's why it's called yeah. ketogenic. Right. That's what you, that's what you or your body would then use for fuel. Yeah. That can actually normalize mitochondria that may be defective and yeah. stop that mitochondria from turning the cancer, the cell yes. cancerous. Yeah. In other words, it stems the tide. It right. stops that cellular reproduction that we want to stop when it when it turns cancerous. Yeah. That's kind of layman's terms. I yeah. hope I got it accurately, but I think that's yeah. in, in a nutshell why the ketogenic diet is is healthy. And now, exactly. It, regarding cancer cells, cancer cells ferment glucose. As yes. Dr. Butarik says, they are obligate glucose metabolizers. Yes, exactly. Patrick Quillen says it too. <laughs> I don't know who, who, who got it first, the chicken or the egg, right? Who said it's a great it term. It's a great term, yeah. but that's, what, that's the way cancer cells produce yes. energy. <clears throat> if you obligate means they have to, mm -hmm. right? So yep. you remove the, the fuel yeah. because when you're eating a ketogenic diet, high in fat, moderate protein, very low carbs, that fuel's not there anymore. Yeah. You're eating fat for fuel and cancer cells don't metabolize fat very well. Right. They can to a very, very inefficient level. Yeah, exactly. But not, 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 not well enough to keep them alive. Right. So you, what you're really doing by eating a ketogenic diet is you're taking that, that fuel for the mm. cancer and you're removing it from the body. Yeah. So the healthy cells, they don't have any problem at all using ketone yeah. bodies for energy, but right. the cancer cells do. So in, in essence, you're killing off the cancer cells. You're yeah. normalizing the function of the mitochondria by just eating a diet that's high quality fats. And it's yeah. gotta be high quality fats, yes. right? That's where Atkins had it wrong. Exactly. Atkins had way too high uh, protein, I think. Yes, high protein. Not, a, not yep. as high fats. Yep. And he didn't really care about the quality of the fats. You're very right about that. So it's gotta mm -hmm. be high quality fats. I love um, coconuts. I yeah. love coconut oil. Oh, yeah. I love uh, extra virgin olive oil. Yep. I love avocados. Avocados. So I good. live yep. on avocados. Yeah. I eat a couple a day at least. Yeah, it's one of the best strategies you can do to be yeah. preventing cancer. It is. Yeah. And so the high quality fats fuel your body well. They help you to lose weight. Absolutely. Right? Everybody that I've ever talked to that's gone ketogenic has lost weight. Yeah. And the funny thing, the cool thing is I think about ketogenic diet, like when I was doing ketogenic, and I did it before the second, the quest for the cures continues. Okay. I went keto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After I interviewed you, <laughs> yep. I never heard we about it. We talked about it. And yep. we did it. I yep. did the keto for a month. I dropped like 15 pounds. Yeah. And the, but I wasn't doing it to lose weight. I just wanted yep. to see what it did. And the funny thing was, I was eating a ton of food. Right. I mean, I was eating yeah. omelets yeah. and avocados, and I was frying up chicken. Yeah, with in the coconut oil. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, I, I was eating a. Ton you were taking of food. in a lot of calories, but your body became more efficient. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but I also coupled it with intermittent fasting. Yes. So and yes. I think that was a big thing for me. Oh yeah. Because the reality is, there's only so much food you can eat in six yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, you're full. Exactly. And then if you go 18 hours. Yep. Before eating again, you're going to lose some weight. Yeah. Because your body is just not taking in those calories. That's right. And when you're eating a ketogenic diet, like I was eating eggs, sausage. Organic, you know, good, high quality meats. Yeah. Beef. I was eating lots of oils, lots of uh, avocados, um, a ton of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. I was doing, I did like the key lime pies. Yeah. That you, that yeah, you yeah, showed yeah. us. Yeah. But I made them keto. Right. So I removed the honey yeah. and I put stevia in. Exactly. So I was eating those. So That's I was eating right. A ton of calories, yeah. a ton of fats. Yeah. But I, I started eating at like 12 30 and I quit eating at mm -hmm. 6 30. And by 6 30, yep. that tight six hour eating stuffed. window. Yeah. I was like, I want to eat more because I know I can't have mm -hmm. 18 hours of food, yep. but I'm too full to eat. Yeah, exactly. And what you do when you intermittent fast like that, in general, a ketogenic approach is you significantly reduce insulin. Mm -hmm. We know insulin stimulates that cell reproduction. Yeah. So That's naturally true. our body stops reproducing those, uh, those cells as fast, which naturally is going to lower cancer cell formation. Yeah. On top of that, just like you were saying, we know cancer cells are very metabolically inflexible. So they really can't use these ketones for energy. And they actually use sugar not only for energy and cell reproduction, but also to, pr to produce an antioxidant defense system. So now like their shield, which they can create a really strong shield that protects them even from chemotherapy. Right. Now that gets reduced 
And now the body's own natural white blood cells are able to hunt them out, target them, right? Destroy them. It reduces their blood supply. So it's really, really powerful just applying what you said. Intermittent yeah. fasting, high fat, low carb diet, getting that ketogenic lifestyle approach. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. And what are some other, I know you've talked to so many different cancer researchers and so many different doctors that are treating cancer naturally. What are some other therapies that you found to be very, very effective that either work in conjunction with a ketogenic lifestyle or yeah. you know that people can be doing on top of that? Yeah, I think that you, when you're looking <clears throat> at a cancer treatment protocol, it's gotta be a protocol. Yeah. So it's not just not one thing. So it's not just doing mm -hmm. a ketogenic diet. Right. Although that has, that has worked for people. Yeah. Like I know people exactly. that have just gone keto and their cancers disappeared. Yeah. But I think it should be a whole slew of things. So yeah. you got to, you know, ketogenic uh, diet mm -hmm. if that's what you choose. Now, some yeah. people decide to do another type, but sure. whatever it is, you clean up your yeah. diet. Yes. I think intermittent fasting should always mm. be a part of it, whether it's ketogenic or not. Yep. Intermittent fasting. You've got to move. You got to yeah. exercise. So I love the rebounder, jumping up and yes. down. You've got to move the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in that same vein, that's, that's really a detoxification protocol, yeah. I, would, I yeah. would call it. Because you mentioned, you know, it's toxicity with a deficiency. So you're exactly. toxic, you got to detoxify. Jumping on a, on a trampoline helps. Yep. Also, every night I sit in the sauna. Yeah. So I sweat. Right? Absolutely. 45 minutes, I'm sweating like a pig. And our ancestors were sweating all the time. All the time. But and today's the age, we control the temperature around us. We're right. not doing that. And I'm working inside all day on the computer. Yes. I'm sitting there clicking. I've got to exercise and sweat on yes. in the sauna. Otherwise, I'm not going to get it. Yeah. So I think that's a big part of it as well. Um, and, you know, a, a, another big part of it, too, that's, maybe not even in the periphery of this interview, but I think it's it's gonna be more important in the yeah. future is figuring out ways to mitigate exposure to the radiation. Mm, I yes, think that's a big absolutely. one for cancer patients. And you're talking about electromagnetic frequencies, right? So cell phones, cell phone things like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big one. Yeah. I think, I think. yeah. And and you know, I don't have a real good answer to it. Yeah. Because we're like we're sitting here we're in Nashville. Exactly. We're we got cell towers all around us. We got we're Wi Fi right pinned. in here. We got Wi Fi everywhere. I mean Yeah. What do you do? You minimize it the best you can. Exactly. So what, what are some it, what are some strategies to minimize it? Um, we have, Easy strategies, you know. Things we've got a whole have. house device that we yeah, use in our yeah, house that yeah. we leave, that we run twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's called a wave rider. Okay. okay? And yeah. it just it basically what it does is it it makes the it, it recreates a noise field of the earth mm -hmm. so that when the electromagnetic radiation comes in in the form of cell phone pings mm. or whatever it might yeah. be that you're exposed to Wi Fi, yeah. your body doesn't recognize it. Okay, wave rider. It's called a wave, wave rider. rider. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, yeah, we'll put that in our notes. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's what we do. Um, that's great. I also have like a, mm -hmm. on our devices that yeah. like a cell phone or iPad or whatever that that will receive yes. a signal. That the wave rider is what's called an active device. It's mm -hmm. always creating that noise field to make your body. Mm. It's kind of like if a dog, if I took a dog whistle and blew it in your ear. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt you. Right. You don't know it's there. Yeah. But you can do that to a dog and drive a dog mad. Yes. Because they hear it. They're hypersensitive so to they're it. They're hypersensitive. Yeah. What this does is it makes it your body just doesn't hear the radiation. Mm. Hear the, it doesn't feel yeah. the radiation. So mm. it doesn't react with the cells good. don't react. Yeah. But we also have passive devices that we put on our on our cell phones that when yeah. they do receive a call, it creates a noise field mm. and it helps your body. There's that's just two of many things. There's, yeah. There's a lot of devices out there that mm -hmm. say they do this. I haven't researched a lot of them. Right. The ones that we use, though, I've, I've done the research, and I, yeah. th I think that they're doing what they say. Yeah, and even without a device or something like that, like if you're using your cell phone, better to use it on speaker. Keep it away from keep your it body. Away from your head. Yeah. Don't put it absolutely. in your pocket if you're a man, unless you mm -hmm. want your testicles to be getting it. And yeah. sperm counts are have been shown to be lower right. if you carry it in your pocket. If you're a woman, don't carry it in your bra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Breast cancer rates are, if you're talking on the phone, don't do this because brain we're cancer. seeing brain cancers on the side you hold your, your phone. Yeah, absolutely. It's there. I, w I just had uh, one of our eldest daughter, Brianna. Yeah. She had a, a kid at, at school that didn't yeah. want or that didn't understand radiation. And he's, he was saying, well, that's not really that dangerous. So I did a lot of research and put together like a three page summary yeah. with hot links to all the studies. Mm. I was astounded, all the studies that are showing a direct correlation between radiation and cancer. Yeah. Send it to him, and now he wants to get the devices for his phones. So yeah. it's good. It's powerful, you know, it's out kids. there. Exactly, absolutely. What do you think about getting out in nature? Because nature has a very healing yeah. electromagnetic frequency. I agree, yeah, get out in nature, yeah. walk barefoot. Yes, exactly. Get, get out in the sun. That's right. Don't be afraid of getting in the sun, yes. vitamin D3. Yep, you exactly. Know? We're, we, are, we are scared into believing that we shouldn't get in the sun. If you do go in the sun, you better wear sunscreen. Yeah. That, by the way, contains at least a half dozen chemicals that cause cancer. 
Absolutely. And it also blocks ultraviolet B, yeah. which is what will turn into D3. Exactly. It, sunscreens typically don't block much of the ultraviolet A, yeah. which is more of the carcinogen. Yeah. So it's exactly the opposite of what we should be doing. Right. We should be getting sun. I know guys, look, I'm not going to name names. I know guys that walk out naked on their property <laughs> right. to get sun on their yes. whole body. Yes. Because, and I mean, that's because one of the they want to absorb as things. much as they possibly can. Exactly. I don't want to exactly. see it. I don't want to visualize it, but yep. it, I know guys that are doing that. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> one of the biggest things I tell my clients to do to just get started with reducing that electromagnetic frequency is go out to a park or somewhere where you can be in nature and do a walk, ideally a barefoot walk, mm -hmm. Um, every day, and so and do it in your in your swimsuit. Yeah, ideally, I mean, get, exactly. If it's get warm, that good quality get the sun vitamin exposure. D, grounding. You got it. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. recreating exactly the way that we yep. are supposed to live. Yep, absolutely. And even foresting, like just getting out in the forest. Yeah. And you know, we always heard like tree huggers and things like that. Now we know that actually tree hugging is is a healing therapy yeah. because the tree itself has a healthy electromagnetic frequency, yeah. and that can help blunt the negative effects of cell phone based EMFs. Yep. So yeah, just getting out in nature on a regular basis, one of the best things people can be doing. I know myself, I get out every single day, my wife, my little boys, we take a barefoot walk around our neighborhood. And uh, even in the cold weather, like we do it, we'll get all bundled up, but we'll keep our feet bare. And at first, you know, the first time you do it, it's like a muscle you gotta build, just kind of like fasting or anything. You gotta build that muscle, you just need the, the exposure. But over time, it, it actually gets easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And even concrete, conducts a healthy electromagnetic frequency. So if you're on concrete, ideally grass, dirt, sand, like at the beach, things like yeah. that, just so therapeutic. Yeah. What are some foods or herbs too that we can use to help balance blood sugar? Because a lot of these things are hybrid. They help us balance blood sugar and reduce um, the free radical damage from radiation. Well, specifically herbs that we mm -hmm. use, and, and to yeah. be honest with you, I'm not sure if they're going to help balance blood sugar or not. But I can yeah. go through the herbs. You tell me, I'll let you know. Because I'm yeah. sure that you know. Yeah. We do we do a lot of basil. Yeah. We do oh, a yeah. lot of cilantro. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are Absolutely. two big ones. We have rosemary yeah. growing. Yeah. On exactly. Our, on our property. So good. Yep. We have thyme. Yep. Uh, yep. We have parsley. Yep. Those are the five main ones that we that we yeah. use regularly because they grow. And, and our, our our girls, Charity and Tabitha. Yeah. They'll literally go out the garden. And they'll just, they'll come in with a mouthful of mm. herbs. They eat them fresh. Yep. They pick them and eat them fresh. Yep. I have to stop them from eating the grass. <laughs> but I mean, they, they literally eat all of them. Yeah, but those are the five main ones that natural flavor to them. Mm -hmm. And you know, they are good for blood sugar because they're bitter herbs. And we say bitter are good for the liver. And guess where ketones are produced? The liver. The liver. We need a healthy liver in order to have good, stable blood sugar, to have yeah. metabolic flexibility. So they are That's very good That's a good, good rule of thumb. I'll remember that. Bitter good for the liver. You got, got it. Got it. Yeah, how about cinnamon? You like cinnamon? We love cinnamon, yes. yes. Yeah, love cinnamon. Yep. Um, foods that we that, that we eat a lot of. Yeah. Uh, I've already mentioned avocados. Yeah. I know those are good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so food. good, exactly. The coconut oil as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I love I love to fry in coconut oil. Yes. That's the only thing that we'll fry yep. in. Um, yep. Anything other than that. High heat point, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's got a high heat point. I love making uh, French fries, fried chicken, yeah, yeah. You it, fried green tomatoes. Yeah, you can do a lot with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and people don't understand that you can actually have healthy fried stuff. Yes. The problem with fried foods in the past was not only the fact that they were extremely calorie dense, so you yeah. don't want to fry everything. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of calories. Yep. But they were being fried in trans fats and bad oh, oils. Oh yeah, exactly. Right, and which has exactly the opposite effect of your on your body that good oils and good fats. Right. Do. Yeah. So if you're using trans fats or soybean, corn, mm -hmm. cottonseed oil, peanut oil, yeah. it's going to combust, become a rancid fat, and just cause more inflammation, oxidative stress yeah. in the body. That's what most people are doing. Whereas coconut oil has that remarkable resiliency, right? Mm -hmm. It's really, really stable, so you can cook at a high temperature yeah. with that, and you still get the, the, the health benefits that come with coconut yeah. oil. So, and, and, and the, the like a typical <clears throat> day for me. Yeah. Uh, of what I would eat, yeah. Is I, I typically don't eat until mm -hmm. past noon. Yep. Um, I'll drink a protein shake. Yep. You know, bone yep. broth protein, something. And, like and that. I love that because liquid nutrition is easy on the gut, mm -hmm. easy on the digestive system. Yeah. It's already digested. The more we can yeah. rest the gut, the better our body is going to heal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and very low sugar. Yep. Um, and I'll drink a green shake. Yeah. So we have super greens that we yeah, drink it's awesome. with water, drink it down. So there so, you go, you get tons of micronutrients right there. I'm like right down there. nutrients and I get back exactly. to Exactly. Yeah. But you know, if I'm eating you know, a meal, it's yeah. gonna be a, a salad yeah. that's got a mm -hmm. lot of uh, you know, spinach, arugula, yes. all the, every vegetable that I can dream mm -hmm. of cut up. Um, right. Olive oil, vinegar, something like that is a dressing. Yeah. 
some sea salt, yep. lots of avocados cut up yes. in it. Yes. And then um, I might scramble up a few eggs, yeah. eat it with it, or you know, put a piece of salmon with right, it. Right, right. But that's that's the big meal. I don't yeah. I don't do bread. Yeah. Um, I don't do grains really. Yep. I'll yep. do I'll do some quinoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, which is a healthier grain. It's a healthier grain. Exactly. I'll mix in a pure bone broth, bone broth yes. into the rice, into, into the quinoa as yep. I cook it to increase the protein. Exactly. Um, I don't really drink. I don't do milk. Yeah. I'll drink some almond milk. Yep. So at times, I don't eat a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, How about herbal teas? I do a lot of herbal teas. Yeah, green tea. Yeah, yeah. We talk about green radiation. Tea. Green tea is a great yeah, one. Yeah, you're right. Matcha yeah. green tea. Yeah. yeah. So I love I love the hot teas. Yep. Um, I do a lot of hot chocolate. Yeah. But it's yeah. With, it's the healthy chocolate. Right. With cacao. Raw cacao. And, yeah. So it's not yep. the whatever Hershey's that you would buy yeah. in, in a store shelf. It's exactly. It's a healthy form of and chocolate. And believe it or not, raw cacao actually has more of the ECGC, which is as powerful From polyphenol green than green tea does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the yep. same thing that the green tea has. Yes. But it's got more. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really dense. So yeah. now you'll enjoy your, your hot chocolate even it. more. Yeah. So th but that's awesome. a typical day. I mean, it's not... I, I, I probably get most of my calories, mm -hmm. lately at least, from yeah. drinking the bone broth and the super yes, green Yes, yes. And so, so good for the gut, the liver, because you got the greens, which are really good for, again, lots of bitter herbs, lots of micronutrients, getting that liver real healthy, the, the bone broth with that collagen mm -hmm. protein, really, really good for the gut. Yeah. And I know you talked about in your book, uh, Cancer Step Outside the Box, kind of a, a way of going about detoxing your systems, right? Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Sure. Um, you know, there's a there's definitely an order yeah. to detoxification. Right. So you've got to, as Dr. Daniel Newsom says, you've got mm -hmm. to unclog the exits. Yeah. Right. And so the number one uh, place that you should start is to detoxify your colon. Yeah. Because if we're if you're eating a lot of food over your lifespan that's processed, dead, enzymeless, mm. you're not going to digest it well, and it's going to be impacted. Yes. Okay. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. You get you get nasty gunk impacted on your yeah. colon. And not to be overly graphic Nasty here. Nasty gunk in your trunk. It, it is. <laughs> it, it, it is in your trunk. Yes. And, and no, not to be overly graphic, but I'm going to be it. I'm going to hey. this will exemplify the point. Exactly. So I, I remember when one of the kids was tiny. I don't want to embarrass mm -hmm. them particularly. Yeah. I won't name them. <laughs> but I remember they went to the bathroom and had a big old bowel movement. I was like, goodness gracious, that is huge. Like the diameter is like, how did that come out of that? Right. But as you age, typically the size of your bowel movements get smaller yeah, and longer. Yeah, narrower, yep. Why? Because you're impacted. Yes. You've got gunk on the insides of your yep. colon. Yeah. So you've got to clean that out. So that's mm -hmm. the first place that you start. Yep. From there, experts disagree whether you should go from there to parasites. Yeah. Or you should do liver, mm -hmm. gall next, or if you should do kidneys. I'm not, I'm not adamant about eating yeah. any of those. You start at the colon, though, yes. and you clean that out, and then... When I you agree. detoxify the other organs, there's a place for all that waste to go instead of getting reabsorbed into your colon mm. because there's because you're impacted. Yeah. So that's really the main one to me is to do the colon first and yeah. then you follow it with the rest of the body. Typically, when I'll do a full body cleanse, it'll be accompanied by juicing. Yeah. Only I don't eat. I know people yeah. do have you know, they'll eat salads or whatever. I prefer to right. just do juice because mm -hmm. yep. I feel like it's easier in my digestion. Yes. And it's also rewarding to the extent that if you're doing a full body cleanse and you haven't eaten solid food in three weeks, but you're still pooping out solid material, yeah. you know it's working. Yes, absolutely. You're like, wow, yep. that's still coming out, it's and surprising I haven't eaten you. solid yes. food in three weeks. Mm -hmm. This must be stuff that needs to come out. Yeah. So it, it, mentally, it's, it's like, wow, this is, this is good. I'm, I'm making progress here. Yeah, it's good stuff. And so, all right, so you're on a, on a deserted island, okay? You got five foods to live on and two supplements. What do you bring with you? <laughs> All right, five foods. It's gonna definitely be avocado. <laughs> yep. Coconut, of course. Yep. Now I've got to have a machete to get into the coconut. Yeah, exactly. But avocado. We'll coconut. give you the machete. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I would probably want to have something like uh, a quinoa mm -hmm. for substance. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, even yeah. though I don't typically do grains, if I'm mm -hmm. on a deserted, deserted island, I'm gonna kind of want that. Yeah. I'm trying to think. It's hard to narrow down. I know. Beets, yeah. I think, would be one beets, because yep. of the detoxification. Mm, yeah, a lot you of beets in there. Of a, yeah, natural exactly. detoxifier. Yep. So I've got avocado, coconut, quinoa, beets. Gosh. Maybe 
if it's something that's growing, mm -hmm. which it probably would have to be on a, on a deserted island, I probably want carrots. Mm, okay. Um, because they're so versatile. Yeah. Yeah, they are. You can make so many yep. dishes with them, and you can make them taste like so many different things. And yeah. they're also really good substance. Yeah, very rich in nutrients, and they yeah. have a lot of this arabinogalactin fiber that's a great prebiotic yeah. that helps support bifidobacterium development. So, yeah. yeah, really good. How about two supplements? Two supplements you get to bring. Okay. I would, one of the supplements would be my bone broth. Yep. Because and we'll give you the blender. You okay, the blender. you got the blender for the bone broth. <laughs> and uh, well, the other's going to be the organic greens. There you go. So, so you got greens powder. You got, so now you're getting, you know, all your whole blend of micronutrients in there. And I can make all kinds of there. dishes with avocado, carrots, beets. Yeah. Quinoa and coconuts. I'd have my fats from the coconut yes, oil. Yes, exactly. So. There we go. Sounds great, man. Absolutely. Well, I, I just want to uh, acknowledge you for all the great work, Ty, that you're doing as far as getting this message that, you know, cancer is not something we necessarily need to fear. We just need to be proactive and, and go out and really live the kind of lifestyle that's going to help our body kill cancer every day. Because we know we're either building it or we're killing it yep. every single day with the things that we do. And you have pioneered um, this truth about cancer message. And I mean, you guys are reaching people all around the world. And uh, I just want to acknowledge you as being a, a great mentor for a young guy like myself and uh, also helping really to uh, establish my platform to do a summit like this right here. Well, thank and you. so thank you so much, Ty. And how do people find out more about you and the things you're doing? Um, best website is thetruthaboutcancer.com. Yeah. So go there. Um, yep. Thank you for the kind of words, Dr. Absolutely. J. I appreciate you. Definitely. And um, God gets all the glory for That's this. Right. That's right. Amen. He does. Caused this to just Amen. explode. It's not because Absolutely. of me. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So definitely check out truthaboutcancer.com. Amazing website. Tons of great content. They really answer a lot of your questions when it comes to cancer, things you can be doing on a regular basis, causes of cancer. Um, you'll find all of that at Truth About Cancer, so check that out. And if you've gotten value from this interview, um, then I want to encourage you to consider owning the entire Keto Edge Summit for yourself. That way you get access to all the interviews, the transcripts, all for, for a lifetime. Plus, we've got a ton of different bonuses that are going to help empower you, as you and support you as you go through your ketogenic journey. So if you consider owning it for yourself, we would really be honored. And we'll see you in a future interview. God bless you guys.